Am I still on? Just gonna send it! <laughs> you all ready for this? Just gonna send it! that beautiful, beautiful bird. Here we go. Japan show pop up. Primo is in the house. We're going to get to him in a second, but Trudeau was run out of Welland today. I have the video evidence to prove it. It's the Jim Fannin Show. Primo, thanks for taking the time today, brother. And I want to give you some props because, man, you are one. Where'd you go? You are one of the big voices out there, man. Where, where's my guest? Where's my? You just say uh, he left. <laughs> he left his camera. <laughs> he left his camera on. He went to sleep. Ah, Primo. Uh, I'm back. I got to fight, huh? What the fuck, man? You know, it's good to be back in Welland because I went to school just down the street and I had an interview with Chad today. I thought he was in Vancouver or some shit. I didn't know he was a Welland boy. I should have known, man. All my Welland boys are kind of like the Italian French cross a lot of them like my buddy Saint Chalais he's a confed guy so you guys started talking to me about confed today I'm like oh my bad boys went to confed <laughs> you know he probably I shouldn't probably say his name on the air but, dude tell us a little bit about what went down today you know I am a reluctant uh not a reluctant supporter I'm a reluctant protester and I kind of feel like maybe I'm just a, a, an a, I'm observer. I'm a I'm a documenter. I'm taking video. I'm not really part of your clan. I'm not chanting. I'm not, you know, laying down in front of the bus to stop Trudeau from leaving Atlas Steel today. But, dude, tell me a little bit about how this thing got started, your role in it, and kind of how you felt. Like, I feel like I was kind of bummed because I wanted the perfect uh, sound bite. You know, the video clip of the bus being halted with 500 people around it yelling insults at Justin Trudeau. It's fine that it didn't go down that way because when he left the hotel at 10:30, 11 o'clock or whatever time it was, I don't think the mob knew that it was him leaving in the SUV because the everyone was already over at the old Atlas Steel building. And so, but he was in that SUV, the one that went rrr, rrr, on the way out and some guy in the megaphone was going, Justin, where's uh, Sophie? Where's Sophie? It was just perfect timing, you know? And that's, I love that bad. I'm like, you, you don't wish, you know, a man's marriage to fall apart, but she's been missing for a couple years. It's obvious that they're not together. So I was happy that when he left the hotel, there was probably, maybe I'm overestimating because I'm not good with crowds. Three, 400 people, at least on the lawn, peacefully assembling, not blocking traffic not you know doing anything other than just yelling freedom and the you know the occasional insult when i listened to him live broadcasting when we got over to the old atlas steel building he was calling all the protesters angry anti-vaxxers that's how he thinks of a guy like i'm not an anti-vaxxer i have been vaccined as a child i just i'm gonna take my time i'm gonna chance with, with covid i'm not taking the shot it's Anyway, I'm I'm blathering. I appreciate your time. How did you things see things go down? Because originally I was bummed out, but I'm then 
you know what? He got to see the, the critical mass of people, even though he managed to get out of there and there was only about 100 people left. There was, you know, three or four before that. So your take on things today, bro. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> he, uh, they always <laughs> they always like to throw the, these are a bunch of angry anti-vaxxers and a bunch of angry um, anti-maskers. And why they do that is because they want to discredit everyone's hard work. Because, hey, let's talk about a Monday morning on a holiday and, uh, you know, like, I would say between all the places we went to, like, there were people in the one entrance. Like, after we left the Best West Western and we went to ASW Steel, you've seen where I was. I realized when I was leaving, there was people at the other entrances blocking it off down the road uh, along the cage fence there, uh, just waiting to try and get a peek at them and, and say their word. And uh, there were people around that whole building. Like, uh, an honest, fair guess, I would say that, I, there was probably a thousand people between the two places. That's what I would assume. And once again, I'm not the best at uh, right with those numbers either, like guessing numbers. But like that's what I'd have to guess. And uh, you know, there were people from all over the place. A lot of people from Welland. A lot of support from people who are uh, involved with PPC. And uh, it was just, it was good to see because. You know, I, I go for my morning drive for a coffee and I, I still see liberal signs in Welland and I, it blows my mind how anybody can uh, be okay with the Liberal Party right now and, and what's gone on in the last uh, few years here. Um, and I guess today showed that uh, they're very few in numbers. Yeah, what's your take on, I know you're not, you don't have an official capacity with the PPC, either do I for that matter. Um, and it's not being promoted by the party, but the local candidate, Peter Taras, sent out a memo today saying, assemble. I saw the last video of Trudeau getting heckled, and there was a lot of PPC signs there. And I was kind of weighing out, okay, how am I feeling about this? Because I want the PPC to be more mainstream and get some more pub, and I guess that's fine. There's no such thing as bad pub, but... It seems like these protests seem to be almost shaping up like PPC. Like that's a <laughs> dude. There's more PPC signs than there was. There was no liberal supporters there at all today. Okay, there so, was not one. There mm -hmm. wasn't one of them. And what's your thoughts on, you know, the fact that it, the PPC seems to be reaching some sort of critical mass under? protesting Trudeau Are, do you have any reservations about the you know aligning themselves with that ideology uh well you know what the PPC actually got a newfound respect from me today showing up there today and firing out an email that I got from them last night I mean I already knew this was going down yesterday like in the afternoon I just didn't tell anybody I had somebody who let me know and uh, I was going to be there no matter what I just wanted to put out the message at the right time because I figured if I put it out too early and Trudeau's team and Vance Badaway and all them got a hold of it that they were going to do a decoy and, and he wouldn't be there. So I wanted to put it out at the right time. But for the PPC to show up in the numbers they did today and uh, with all the support they did, I was actually very impressed because I don't think uh, most political parties um, would do what they did today. Like that was a little bit intense. And uh, I think people are sick of what most political parties would do and, and they need like this real freedom totem party to be there for them, you know? Okay. Tell us a little bit about how you got started in this. Oh, and by the way, nice job with rebel news the other day. I thought they did a pretty nice piece with you. You're so, you're so mild mannered. I know you probably have a, an aggressive side to you like we all do, but you really come off. It's like me today there. You're, you know, you're amongst st so many people, strangers, most of them. And if you approach me with kindness, what do you think? You're going to get an asshole? Like, I'm pretty approachable, even to the strangers, you know what I mean? So tell us a little bit about how you got involved in this. And, I, you know, I want to say I really appreciate your your the way you connect with people in a humble way. Yeah, you are the guy that riles them up at the microphone and gets them all wound up and enchanting. That's certainly not my area of expertise, so I appreciate a guy like that. But I think you have this humility and this connectedness 
this availability that really resonates. So thank you for that. But how'd you get hooked up on this? And how do you, have you been a political protester your whole life or you just get swept up in the whole lockdown issue? No, I got swept up in the whole lockdown issue, man. I have, uh, I've always been open about some mental health struggles and, uh, some alcohol addiction in my life. And, uh, when this first lockdown, uh, hit, um, you know, I was straight clean for like, I was sober, not drinking for about a year. And, uh, all of a sudden everything around me closes except for the alcohol store include, including my in-person, uh, meetings that I went to. So like all my supports and resources that help keep me on track, they close on me. Uh, I go to the gym to, uh, you know, for mindfulness and the gym closes on me. So they literally took everything away from me that I need to succeed and uh, not use alcohol. And they left me with money in my bank account and the LCBO open. So what do you think happened? I ended up drinking, right? And uh, it didn't last that long, thankfully. But I really realized that I needed to uh, start exercising and whatnot outside and finding my own ways around that. And uh, then I started, you know, I started following like Colin and Sandor and Alicia and, and seeing what's going on. And like, I, I started, started kind of getting uh, an open mind and started learning about things and educating myself. And, and I finally had enough. And then to see uh, Alicia be slandered the way she was and Colin and the way mainstream media was making these people out to be when I knew them. And in fact, they're some of the like most beautiful people I know. Um, I just couldn't get behind it. I was really upset. And then, you know, when everything happened with Shandor there and seeing him get conditions and then he goes up and gives this powerful speech. Um, yeah. And he's not know, a speaker where, like self-admittedly, he's not a public speaker. Like he's done it, it but it's not a it's strong funny. suit. It's funny. Me and him were just talking about this the other day. He's not a speaker, but he's like one of the best speakers that I've seen at any protest. And I go to all of them all over at Fairco. So he's not a speaker, but he's a speaker. <laughs> if that makes sense. I, that's all you know? I do is speak. But when you get me up in front of a rally crowd, you get me up in front of a wedding. I can MC it. I can introduce the guests and stuff like that. You get me in front of a rally crowd and my mic kind of doesn't go right and people are screaming we can't hear you i bail i pull the eject lever dude i'm so gone <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyway yeah, uh, sure, i appreciate uh, just that one that one day when shandor just jumped up there and he wasn't supposed to speak through a megaphone and he wasn't going to be silenced and he said you know here i am i'm not supposed to speak through a megaphone and i'm speaking through a megaphone and i'm not supposed to talk to cullen hi cullen you know like he just showed me like, you know, this guy's way too brave. I got to stop being a coward and sit in the back seat. I'm sharing all these posts and I'm getting in on all this stuff. I might as well just go out there and be loud because I can be loud. So why not do it? Well, I appreciate that. Uh, Woody's in the house. Uh, YouTube is my YouTube is blowing up because I put a couple of clips up today that are catching fire. So that's great. Yeah. I, I caught fire on uh, TikTok a little while ago. Tell me how you're handling the social media game. I'm on my seventh YouTube channel. Dude, I went from 3.30 to 5.30 today, so I gained a couple hundred subs just today, and it's it's clean. I've got my 4,000 watch hours. I could be monetized as soon as I get to 100 or 1,000 subs. You know, the first one was paying me 1,500 bucks a month. Like, I was doing okay. Yeah. I had 1.5 million views a month, so it was paying me 1,500. And so I just want to know, I know you started out, you had, you had, you have had some success at it. How are you treating your social media and what do you find that's taken off for you? Uh, you know, that's a hard question. Like when I ended up hooking up with Chris a couple of weeks ago and, and we kind of started like blossom this new friendship and, uh, you know, when I got involved with all this stuff, I never really aligned myself with anybody, with any groups. Uh, and I always liked his message. And then we kind of hooked up and did some talking and planned Niagara. And uh, he started, you know, like sharing some posts of mine. And then like, I think one day he mentioned me and something on his story or whatever. And then like, all of a sudden I noticed my Instagram and that it was like, people are adding you and adding you and adding you and adding you. And believe it or not, 
a lot of people are like, oh yeah, you're probably like some crazy attention whore. And <laughs> I actually had, I actually had like my Facebook and my Instagram and all that stuff on private oh, up really? until just about, I want to say maybe a month ago. And then I said, Come you know on, what? Really? Ev- maybe, maybe it was a little longer, maybe okay. a couple months, Jim. I'm not too sure exactly. Well, you're but just I finally a just private said, guy by nature. Yeah, I just did. I didn't. Uh, well, you know what? When all this COVID stuff happened, three quarters of the people on my list, they weren't happy with what I was doing, right? right? So mm-hmm. it was like I would put something out there and I think I'm doing the wrong thing, right thing, sorry. Mm-hmm. And then I have all these people coming at me all the time and, and it was getting mentally exhausting. Oh, wow. And, you know, this kind of stuff's dividing friends, dividing families. Oh, yeah. It's it's oh. just ridiculous. Welcome to my world, brother. It's uh, it's It's difficult. It's not difficult. It's... It is difficult to stand your ground, to say your piece, to speak truth, because you will be punished. Now, Mm -hmm. I've been self-employed for a long time. I haven't traded, like, I mean, I still trade in real estate if I need to, but I haven't traded seriously since they canceled me last year. Before you knew me, I was the target of Grant LaFleche, you know? Uh, mm-hmm. Laura Yip's boyfriend type of thing and and they ran their fake news on me you know front and center now I was guilty of what they charged me for but they certainly took it out of context they certainly didn't talk about my frustration of speaking about a woman that's a an atheist tweeting out Jesus fucking Christ so all I did was call her a DFC like well, who do you think built society western cultures based on Christian values What's your fucking problem with them? So after I took hate mail for so long, I mean, it really does get you down. And it's tough. Like, I'm comedy. Like, come on. Who's taking me seriously when I'm in that mood and joking in that way? Yeah, I talk about some serious stuff. But mostly I'm mocking it. You know, I'm talking about local politicians. And I'm not kind all the time. So it's difficult to speak your mind and to stand up I get the cancel culture thing. I get the loss of friends. I get the division within our own family. And it's painful. And I said to some of my friends, and I'll include you in this group of people, when you put people like you and me and Shandor and Alicia and McDonald and everyone else that was served summonses or tickets or charged with offenses for breaking this lockdown thing, you bring the worst out in them when you constantly badger i can take the badgering on social media but when the fake news comes out when you're made unemployable by your vaccine status (laughs) Mm -hmm. your your free speech your filthy mouth i own it all i'm not i'm not saying oh i got poor me but it takes a lot of balls to stand up there. So tell us a little bit. Such a monologue. I, I invite you, poor guy, on the show, and then I don't let him talk. Tell us about some of the costs that you've paid for being, I don't know, being a man, being a, an yeah. alpha, being a leader in your community. You know, not afraid to say this to everyone and talk about, you know, the science. Really? Did you hear what I said today? <laughs> That was the only reason I said I went there today. What's up? Am I allowed to swear? Am I allowed to swear? No, you can swear. Yeah. <laughs> I grabbed my microphone and I pointed it at the door when the door opened to Trudeau. And I said, you know what, Trudeau? I want you to know something. The only reason I'm here today is because my two-year-old's off in the background. Or not my two-year-old. That's a little young. Sorry. My daughter's off in the background over there. I did hear that. And I, and I, I said to him, I said, I want to show her what I want to say to a man who's fucked with my daughter's head for two years now. Wow. And that was a very powerful moment for me. And that was something that was therapeutic for me. It's something I needed to get off my chest to him Mm -hmm. because what he has done to these children is nothing less than criminal. It's disgusting. Taking these kids, taking their structure away from them, taking them in school, out of school, can't be around their friends, around their friends, put masks up, sit in a little circle, walk six feet away, wash your hands. It's disgusting. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know this about me. I'm actually an educational assistant. Uh, I wanted to go back to work for the school board this year. 
I can't do it. Um, my morals are more important to me than my job, man. I can't, inf- I can't be telling kids, oh, you can't hug your little friend Tommy over there, or you can't give him a high five. I can't do it, man. I know how important human connection is and how these kids uh, communicate with each other. And uh, I, I can't, I can't take the plunge, man. Uh, I'm not a sellout. I can't, I can't do something I don't believe in for money. You know, you hit on a really great point there. You know, the suicides, the alcohol abuse. I'm a, I'm an abuser. I'm not a daily, well, I smoke weed on the daily, but I mean, weed, like I can't drink on the daily. I can't have two yeah. drinks at lunch and then function for the rest of the day, even if I quit because I get a migraine uh, by yeah. six o'clock. So I've toned my drinking way back. You know, I don't get hung over. I don't get all the effects from weed that I do from alcohol, but I've found that I'm more prone to, so you were talking about slipping. I'm more prone to abusing now where you have a couple drinks and you're like, ah, and then you got 10 in you, you know, beer yeah. or whatever. And I didn't like this last 18 months, two years, I've been more prone, like I can't, I can't even do that three times a week, not even twice, maybe once a week, maybe twice a month where I have way too, like too many drinks and then I'm ruined for three days. But I, I think this yeah. is getting lost in all of this is, is the mental stress and the isolation that's been put on people and how and you talk about not bringing out the best in people. Man, this is this is the you know idle hands of the devil's tools. You put someone in isolation like that, what the hell do you think they're going to do? If they have any vices at all, any crutches yeah. that they use to get through life, whether it be pills, and we've got a huge epidemic with opioids, Chinese fentanyl is coming across probably the southern American border easier than anywhere else, but it's coming into Canada too, all, mm-hmm. directly. And some containers or however it's getting in here, killing our children, addicting our population. I go downtown, I'm shocked. Tent cities, syringes everywhere, homeless guys walking around, just blurting out. Like, obviously people are suffering from mental illness, but talk to me about how you see the impact of isolation, (laughs) lockdowns on the human psyche and the the proclivity of people to kind of weaken and just pick up their vices and say, ah, fuck it. I don't care. I can't do anything about this. I'm black pilled. Man. So like, let's just call this a well and hat trick. Like we got to have a little bit of a joke to it. But yesterday I went to Tim Hortons (laughs) and it's terrible, but I went to Tim Hortons. There's a gentleman outside who's homeless, somebody that I know I frequent and he's strung out on some stuff and he's having a hard time. And, and, uh, I said, I'll get you a coffee and I'll be right out and we'll have a coffee together. That's just what I do. It makes me feel good. I do it for five, 10 minutes. I take off. It works. I go inside. There's another lady that's pretty well known in Welling and she's screaming at the top of her lungs at the lady at, at Tim Hortons. She's going to strip naked if they don't give her a Boston cream donut. (laughs) <laughs> so i'm like i've never tried that one before yeah it probably like, worked so, though <laughs> so i go give so and so a donut i'll pay for it whatever and you know i didn't really have much time to stick around yesterday so i go to leave and when i'm pulling out of the parking lot there's a homeless guy sitting on the ground and he looks like he's sleeping i go buddy are you okay are you okay buddy are you okay no response i get out of the car are you okay nothing roll him over eyes in the back of the head Boom, had to hit him with the Narcan. Man, I go to Tim Hortons to get wow. a coffee, and I see three three people who are homeless, struggling, <sighs> fucked up on drugs, and I got to hit the one guy with Narcan on the way home. Jeez. And then I got to go home and listen to the news talk about fucking COVID-19, man, <laughs> when we got all this going on that's getting ignored and neglected in the city. This is the great distraction. This is the distraction. I see it happening in the States, too. It's look over here so you don't see what's going on over here. It's nothing but the politics of distraction. And now with the election here, it, it will, yeah. what do you expect? You know, this is the great distraction. Yeah. Yeah. There's all kinds of distractions with this, you know. 
Yeah, and it takes away from all the real issues, like the drug addiction, like the opioids, like weak immigration laws, the security at our borders as far as drugs coming in and stuff like this. Like, I mean, oh man, I I don't know how you're staying, how you're staying positive, Rob. I know you have your days where you're probably black pilling, like I am. You know, for those that don't know, you know. I came from the left. I've got 10 elections under my belt as a lefty Green Party guy before they went completely wacko. My last election was 2015 with them. Now, you know, I I got red-pilled. So, you know, in the Matrix, you know, they, here's the blue pill. You can stay asleep and stay in the fantasy or you can take the red pill. You'll know the truth, you know, and, right. then, you, and then you can deal with it appropriately. The problem yeah. is, is when you know the truth for too long, you become suicidal and helpless and unable to believe that you can beat the machine. And the black pilling is that hopelessness. And, you know, I try to take the clown pill and just laugh about everything because I think that's the next natural progression is you can't take anything seriously. You can't get hopeless. You can't say there's no hope. I got hope in this election. I got hope for a purple wave. Dude, I've never seen this type of political momentum my whole life. Now, I'm no expert, but I have been in 10 campaigns, you know, including leadership of the Green Party of Canada in 06. You know, that was an inside job, but I've never seen anything like this. And I've always been the little guy. I've always been the guy that knew the answer to, oh, I got to vote strategically. That's a loser vote. Tell me yeah. how you're feeling. Can you rest your hope like I am right now? Or do you have other hope that this purple wave is coming? They might not form government, but they're going to make a dent and they're going to surprise a lot of people, man. I think they're going to make a dent. I think they need to keep doing things like they did today because this party has been silenced as much as we hear about them because we're, we support them and we're for them. Uh, you know, you can't get them up on TV or anything because you need what 5% of the vote last year or something to get on there. Yeah. An elected uh, member of the house is one of them. I think 5% might be the other one too. Yeah. And that's why I wish, so, you know, I've talked a lot about this and I know this might be outside your scope unless you're a political science major. I think that, Maxime Bernier is missing an opportune chance to distance himself and and uh, you know stick out from the crowd by getting on proportional representation, which means you get fifteen percent of the vote, which the PPC could do this election. And if mm-hmm. the PPC gets ten to fifteen percent of the vote and they elect one member and Max, that 15%, that those millions of people that voted for PPC have zero representation. Justin Trudeau won the major, uh, minority government, which operated like a majority government via the bloc and the NDP by just selling the house away and giving them whatever they wanted. With, you know, you can get an elect, uh, 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 you know, Stephen Harper's majority government was 37%. That's 63%. That's the majority of the people voted against him. When yeah. pro- proportional, and that's called first past the post. Under proportional representation, if the Green Party gets five percent of the vote, they get five percent of the seats, and then yeah. you ha- yes, you have more coalition governments. But I think Max is missing a an opportunity here because the NDP and the Greens will talk about proportional representation, but if they're ever in power, they'll never do anything about it. So I don't know right. if you've spoken about this or do you see. You know, for me, I'm looking at a national campaign. I'm going, why aren't you talking about this? It's wide open. You can own the whole space. You got any frustrations with the communication at the national level of the PPC? Yeah, I I don't know, man. He even said something the other day I didn't like. I mean, it's kind of obvious, but he even admitted, I don't know if you've seen it. He's like, we're not going to win this election. He's like, I'm a realist. Yeah. And uh, I thought like, ah, man, I don't know if you should say that. Like, I know... I get it. You're not going to win this election, but I think you keep on going with the attitude that you can. So you bring in all those votes and you don't, you don't, you know, detour people from uh, votes because everyone's hey, worried Rob, about votes. Splitting Rob, right sorry right to interrupt. Right you make a great point because what is winning all those elections that I ran as a green party member and I got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I think eight, six percent was my highest or whatever. I wasn't elected. Is that a loss or is that a win? Because I stood, spoke truth, debated the candidates with good faith and 
and turn some people onto the party. So, Matt, you're right. Max shouldn't be talking about we're going to lose this election. And I'm not sure that he's put it that way. I get it. He's being a realist. But it depends how you measure wins and losses. If <laughs> it's going to be a win no matter what, because 10 times the amount of people are going to vote PPC this time around than did last time. That's a prediction. Mark it. Yeah. Um, and I have been, I think Max has done a pretty good job. I know he can't afford to have the best people around him all the time. So he's got a, you know, he's got a staff that requires a budget. And so I'm a little frustrated by some of his communication. But for the most part, man, I can only hang my, ho my hat on the hope that, m you know, the wave is never predicted. When it happened to NDP provincially, Bob Ray was like a like a deer in the headlights. He had no he he couldn't even believe he won. Yeah. And so I think Maxime Bernier wins regardless this time around by virtue of how he placed last time. But he might actually get 10, 15 percent of the vote. That that's a stretch. But I think that's mm -hmm. that's completely possible. You remember that girl in Quebec that went to Vegas for the election and then she got elected and she was like, oh, oh I wasn't yeah, even yeah. in my riding the whole time. I've been in Vegas with my daughter, blah, blah, blah. She came back. She didn't have a clue what she was doing. And that's <laughs> why I kind of I talked to my local candidate. And I'm like, dude, you could you imagine you imagine you mm -hmm. could be elected. You could be in Ottawa. So I kind of hang my my hat on. Stranger things have happened. The wave that re, that that goes across the country is never predicted. And. You know, I don't want to set myself up for failure, you know, a big letdown. But right now, that keeps me going most of the It's just my hope that maybe yeah. the electorate wakes up this time around. Because we've never put people under 18 months of house arrest and then led them to the polls. Let's hope they do something drastic. Let's hope so. <laughs> you know, one thing I realized today is that... Uh, <laughs> Justin Trudeau is uh, not a very liked man in Canada right now. And uh, I think that suits him well. Um, you know, uh, it seems like any big situation he has to deal with, he just deflects it to like provincial government or whatnot. You know, it's like he, he with these vax or uh, these passports, you know, um, offering a billion dollar incentive for provinces to implement them like come on dude <laughs> brother i really appreciate your time just on the way out anything you want to do to promote how people get a hold of you you got a fund we can donate to how do we fucking get some more <laughs> ink on your body dude like come on <laughs> <laughs> you're awesome uh yeah so uh, if you guys just want to send me a couple grand that's cool no um, if you want to add me on Facebook, go nuts. My name's Rob Primo, R O B, and then P R I M O. My Facebook account is just 100% dedicated to this fight right now. So you're going to find out about um, calls to action, things that are going on from here, anywhere around Ontario. You're going to see it on there. Um, my Instagram is at the Rob Primo. You're welcome to go on there as well, too. Uh, I'm pretty active on both of those. And uh, yeah, you're welcome to join along. And I also want to mention this Saturday at Montebello Park, uh, 1 o'clock to 3 p.m., there will be a peaceful protest. And this is very inclusive, unlike Mr. Trudeau's segregated two-tier society. We would love to have people who are vaccinated, unvaccinated, want to wear a mask, don't want to wear a mask, want to bring their kids don't want to bring your kids you're all welcome this is canada after all queen herder is in the house uh we got some comments on uh oh it's nice to get some comments again on youtube because i've been you know so frustrated with my banning on my seventh channel whatever she left his dumb ass uh, no mask for me on youtube the truth on youtube what up uh mike calligan Oh, I can't read all this stuff. Um, but, Rob, I really appreciate your time, especially coming on on short notice. I appreciate what you do in getting this thing going because I know the price that you're paying. It's 
it's not simple, man. It's not, it's never anything but severely complicated. So thanks for putting yourself out there. I'm proud of you getting on Rebel. That's cool. That's you and Shandor and Alicia. Yeah. To, where are Colin? Come on. We need to, you got a connection down there. Let's uh, hook a couple brothers up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but exactly. I right? appreciate all you do. And today was great. I think, uh, you know, it wasn't exactly as we all expected. Um, but, it was a win, you know, when he drove out of that comfort in. Man, <laughs> it was, I'll tell you what, man. I did not expect that amount of people to be there at all. And I'm a, telling you, I thought I was going to show up there today, no word of a lie, with 20 people. That's yeah. what I thought was going to be there That's today. the way I always go into these things, too. And when Alicia, when I, you know, wedged my way into the protest, to, to and I said, well, maybe I'll just introduce you. You know, I was... <laughs> Oh, man. I don't know. I, my brain just farted. Anyways, I love you, brother. Uh, we'll talk I love you soon. too, man. Thanks for taking the time today. And I appreciate all, all the work that you do. And uh, we'll be in touch soon. Let's do a longer segment. Yeah, we'll do. I was just going to say, we can get together and have a blast and do a nice big long one one day, pull okay. up the Facebook accounts and all that. Shandor's, we got more time. Shandor's been in the house Thursdays around noon. And so last, last Thursday, we went live uh, around 2. So I've got a little bit of more accommodations as far as Mike's goes, and we can do a wide angle okay. in, in here. So if you guys want yeah, to yeah. Uh, get in, we can have uh, a big uh, bro session. Anyways, I love that you, That would brother. be fun, yeah. All right. I love Shandor. Thanks All right, love you too, brother. All right, peace out. Okay, ciao. That's Primo if you need him. Not bad. I appreciate that. Find him on the fake book right here. You can see the URL in the title. Um Here's the handoff. This is today inside the plant, which used to be the old Atlas Steel. Clutterbuck owns it now. Somebody told me it's son of the hockey player Clutterbuck. I don't know. I don't really care. I wish no harm on the business that hosted this ridiculous event, but excuse me. Check out this awkward handoff. Okay, mask up, gonna bump elbows. <laughs> what a fucking clown. You know what this clown called the protesters all day? Angry anti-vaxxers. Dude, I'm not anti-vax. I have vaccinations. I took them as a child. Not under, you know, my own choice. But yeah, I got the I got the scar on my shoulder. You know? What was that? Some sort of vaccination for rubella, mumps and measles? Yeah. I didn't contract those things. But this thing, I'm taking my chances with. And you, tyrannical dictator, are going to put us under <laughs> vaccine passports which you know once you tweak the back end your vaccine passport will become a social credit score. You know what that is. That's what they use in China. And if you dissent, if you talk shit about the government, your social credit score will go down so that your interest rate on your cards goes up. You're not allowed to get an Uber. You won't be able to get a taxi, an Uber. You can't get uh, DoorDash, delivery, food, nothing. You're done. You're not part of the current society based on your social credit score and how you feel about current issues. Man, I am not a conspiracy theorist, but I'm worried. If this clown gets elected and you don't vote PPC, don't forget about, you know what? Splitting the vote is bullshit. Splitting the vote is what the old line parties use all the time to keep you home, to keep you from voting. You go into the booth and vote conservative and hold your nose, you're going to feel like dog shit when you leave the booth. And if everyone voted for the party they didn't want in there that had the best chance to beat the party that's in there right now, you'd still end up with a garbage government. Don't fall for the script that a vote for the Greens or a vote for the PPC 
is five votes for Trudeau. It's horse shit. Go in, vote your heart, and you'll feel good. Voting for the lesser of two evils still gets evil elected. Do you get it? Let's listen to Trudeau. I want to take a moment, first off, uh, to thank uh, the folks here behind me today uh, for their hard work and folks like them right across the country. I want to specifically single out Doug. He's the head of Unifor here. Uh, we had a great chat with earlier and with his kids. Uh, the reality is that over the past six years, we have worked incredibly closely with labor unions around the country, first to reverse the anti-union measures that the last Conservative government brought in. People in the labor movement will remember 525 and 377 that Aaron O'Toole voted for, but worked with them mostly to get Canada's economy back on track with good jobs for the middle class, with ambition for the future, including on innovation and fighting climate change. So it's a real pleasure to be here for Labor Day with all of them, focused on their future and their family's future. It's also great to be here with Vance, Christia, and our outstanding Liberal candidates for the Niagara area. Christia. You know, Chris, oh, Andrea. Hang on. Hang on. Um, how long do you think it is before he starts to lose his cool, go off script, and start to get angry. I'm not sure how long it takes, but this video is an, an hour long. <laughs> and Ian. My friends, Canada has celebrated a lot of Labor Day weekends in our history. But I don't know if there has ever been a time when workers have done more for this country. Whether you're a grocery store employee who's kept our plates full, or a steel worker who's kept our economy going strong. In the last 18 months, you've rolled up your sleeves and done your part. And you reminded us that we are always stronger together. And I couldn't agree more. In 2020, when this pandemic hit, we rolled out the wage subsidy so people here at ASW Steel and across the country could stay on the job. In 2017, when the U.S. threatened to tear up NAFTA, we fought for a good deal for Canadian workers, even as the Conservatives wanted Canada to give up. And then, when the Americans imposed steel tariffs, we hit back dollar for dollar. And that's why Donald Trump stood down. What? What? Okay, so... Um completely killing time here <laughs> I'm gonna use the facilities and we'll come back and we'll get into the meat of this meathead in a couple minutes did you know that just about every mammal on earth takes 19 seconds to relieve its bladder time this but what did Aaron O'Toole think of all that he actually called Canada's retaliatory dollar-for-dollar -dollar tariffs dumb policy. Aaron O'Toole would have given in to Donald Trump and given up on these Canadians. We knew that wasn't the way forward. Not on steel, and not on anything. When Donald Trump a imposé des tarifs sur l'aluminium, on s'est battu jusqu'à ce que ces tarifs soient annulés. Christian Freeland pourrait vous en dire bien longuement. Quand il y a des emplois en jeu et des gens à défendre, on se tient debout. Et maintenant, en 2021, on lâche pas. On travaille fort pour en finir avec la COVID-19. It's the country, and quite frankly, it's disappointing to us because we'd expected that the NDP would continue to push hard on the fight against climate change. Instead, they seem to have given up particularly when some people are rating the conservative plan to fight climate change, which involves going back to Stephen Harper, as better than even the NDP plan that they're putting forward in their platform. 
which makes no sense, but that's for the NDP to explain. Nous, on va continuer de prendre des mesures concrètes et ambitieuses pour lutter contre les changements climatiques et pour créer des bons emplois. Et surtout, on va en finir avec la pandémie une bonne fois pour toutes. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to have to do this to you. So, today, successful from the standpoint that... Make them say yes! Oh, settle down. When Justin Trudeau left the hotel, there was a few hundred people standing out front. And um, they were all in PPC purple, pretty much. There was not one red... So There was one red sweater in the crowd. He had a camera and he said he wasn't liberal. I believe him. I didn't really... I didn't talk to him myself, but he looked like a liberal to me because he was wearing a mask. The RCMP, all the feds there today, all masked. There was no media at the hotel, not one. And see, yesterday this broke that there was going to be an event at 1030 today at the hotel, which didn't, which evaporated, but maybe that's how they work it. It seemed like they were stringing the protesters along, moving them from place to place, trying to... And then they waited until there, there was five, four or five hundred people. Three, four hundred. I don't know how to... Like, there was a lot of people. You see my videos. I don't know. We could count them, I guess, from the photo I included. He waited until there was about 100 people at the gate, maybe less than that. We left. It was almost 2 o'clock. We've been fucking... I've been there since 9.30 in the morning. I am not a protester. I'm not that guy. It's not in my makeup. <laughs> but I went down there today because I wanted to get some footage. I wanted to see for myself... Myself... what the feel was like outside of a Trudeau rally. There was no supporters. <laughs> None. They were all protesters. And yes, it's good to get out of the house. And yes, it's good to be assembled with like minds. And yes, you feel like you're united by a common cause. There's an election on right now. How many days... How many days until September 20? 14 days. Two weeks. Yeah, it's Monday today. Two weeks today is election day. <sighs> Frustrated. But I think the PPC gives me hope. Today gave me hope. You know, it's good to get connected with like minds. So a buddy of mine today, we're talking about a mutual friend, and he was going to say, yeah, he's double-vaxxed. The guy never leaves the house. He's 52 years old. What the hell does he need his double shot for? He's not traveling anywhere. He's not going to theater, restaurants, nothing. He never leaves his property. Nice property. <laughs> what up, James St. West? Hardcore fuzzy bucket 12-piece? What the? How, what? Dude, what is with your guys' names? Twitch, what up? Going. Oh, my glasses on. It's a little far away. Truth. Anyway, uh, a good day today. And uh, yeah, we didn't get the sound bites exactly that we wanted. But if you see my, my YouTube's exploding, um, I checked it 522. Let's see what this says now. Fresh shift. Refresh. <laughs> there you go. 562. I have a clean channel here, guys. If you're watching this and you haven't subscribed yet, I ran my original channel up to 6 million, 6,000 6, subs and 3 million views in about three months. It occurs for me that I'm at the ledge right now. 562, I could be at 1,000 by the end of the day and monetized. 
Yeah. So hit the subscribe button. Get in on the comments. I couldn't be more pleased with how this is moving as far as... Oh, should I show you the analytics? Damn. 16,000 today already. <laughs> 16,494. <laughs> I'll take it. S for me. You're welcome. DJ, what up? Here. James St. St. West. True tube. Another B media thing. Wannabe? Oh, wannabe. Yeah, I'm another. I'm a wannabe media thing. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, this is. Yeah, we just we just do this for fame and money and uh, you know to see my name in lights because I'm a narcissist. <laughs> yeah, red pilled. Five years. The black pill comes next. It's not a happy time. The clown pill is after that. And there's nothing that tastes better. 532 notifications. <sighs> All right. What else have we got? I don't think I got much else for you. I didn't put the links in the show description today. I rushed it. I got Primo on the air. That was Primo. That was not bad at all. Look for uh, Shandor this Thursday, too. Again, we've been meeting around noon, which means, you know, we eat and have sociables and stuff like that. Usually around 2 o'clock we go live. We did a full hour this week. I think it was pretty informative. I like Shandor. He's educated. He's well-knowledged, and he's a media critic. Um, so you can check us there. And then I skipped my um, Thursday Night Live last week because I was fucking exhausted, dude. Uh, also, Woody. I ran into Woody today down at the Freedom Celebration. And he said that he voted in advance polls and he had to write the name of the candidate on his ballot. No, no. See... If this is true, I'm going to go to advanced polls to see if this is the truth. I will videotape it behind the curtain. The curtain, because it's just a cardboard box now. I know you're not supposed to do that, but if you, like, here's how you vote in Canada. X beside the name that you're voting for. There's a circle. You put an X inside the circle that's your vote or you can color the circle in you don't have to write the candidate's name in to vote is this is this for real like dude this is coming from a good friend of mine that voted in the advance poll and said he had to put it in an envelope lick it seal it put it inside another envelope after they made it was a blank ballot he said can this be real i'm not calling my boy woody out i'm not saying i don't believe you bro but I don't believe you, bro. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm saying. I can't believe. Ooh. I don't know. Anyways, we're going to go out with some want some because I think that you want some. This is Matt McPherson. I'm proud to include him. Um, because, well, he's not afraid of being Jim Fan and adjacent. <laughs> and me calling him bad words. I'm Jim Fannin. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the subs. Thanks for the love and the traffics and the shares. I am out. <laughs>
poison I like. Get it. I'm getting bored. Stop talking. Enough haberdashery and flim flamming. The she session. The she session. The she. The she session. The she session.